Hello. Uh, so I asked this colleague of mine if they did anything fun on the weekend, and they go like, well, it was raining, so you know, I just stayed home and played with React. And I just stared at them thinking, how do you even play with React? <laughs> okay, they, they see my confusion and they, they, they go like, well, you know, I just built a bunch of web forms. What about you? <laughs> and I'm, so I told them about this video game in Elm, the programming language I've been working on, and they're like, this is so cool. I wish I was smart enough to build a video game. And this is where I get confused. I've, I've had this conversation more than once when experienced great developers tried to convince me that they were somehow not good enough to write a video game. So at first I, I had this idea for the book, but then A, a, a this, this is mean, and B, everyone's idea of fun is different. So that said, if you're in this room and you have some interest in video games, I want you to know that you can build a video game and it's also a great way to learn a new programming language. Oh, this is where you say, programming languages? I thought you were gonna talk about video games. Yeah, but if you are a busy professional, like working on a game just for the sake of it can be hard to justify. However, if you combine it like with learning about new tech, suddenly it's fun exercise and not another time consuming project. And I like to think about learning new programming languages as traveling. You don't have to travel, and obviously you don't have to immigrate, but you might learn something by exposing yourself to different cultures. And I might be pushing this metaphor a little too far, but you tend to pick up really weird food habits while you travel. <laughs> and don't take my word on this. Just read these made up, but perfectly plausible testimonials instead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ser seriously though, there are so many exciting new languages these days. Uh, Elm, Clojure, Rust, uh, pick one, you won't be disappointed. So back to video games. Uh, so a video game is not that different from your typical React app. You typically update state, uh, process user inputs, and then uh, re uh, update the view. But you also get to decide on things like how many times you can ask a friendly NPC for directions before she decides to murder you. Or fix bugs like, you know, sleeping on a melting iceberg results in waking up as a demon. How do you even get that? But, and this, this makes all the difference. And suddenly it doesn't feel like work anymore. And this is how, this, uh, in this environment, learning comes naturally. And worst case scenario, you end up with a canvas full with randomly, full with, uh, randomly textured polygons. And if that's the case, remember this 1923 painting by Kandinsky. It's titled, Trying WebGL for the first time. <laughs> okay, so building a video game might sound like a daunting first project. True, but you do need to build something non-trivial to get a good sense of the language. And it's not that bad. Learn how to, learn how to write Hello World. Okay, you're ready to write a text adventure. Uh, figured out a way to put a pixel on the screen. Okay, the sky is the limit. So, <sighs> Yeah, and one of the reasons I'm giving this talk in the first place is that not enough people are writing video games in new programming languages. And there's something in it for you too. A video game is a great way to draw attention from the community. In general, even a broken one is more exciting than a web form. <laughs> okay, so assume I convinced you, where do, where, where do you start? People seem to get, have one of these two problems. Either I don't have ideas or my ideas are way too ambitious. And I say, oh, forget your ideas and copy an existing game. <laughs> F think of it like making a cover version of your favorite song. There are so many to pick from. Just don't start with an open world RPG. But yay, text adventures. <laughs> yay, text adventures, card games, puzzles. I'm Russian, so I usually go with Tetris. But you don't, ha you don't have to. Uh, and there are even simpler choices. And you can also make a tribute to your favorite AAA title. For example, I built this Mazescape game based on a single panel in The Witness. And if you like Skyrim, you can release the lockpick in minigame as a standalone challenge. And if you digress along the way, well, just go with it. Finally, some advice. Rule one, focus on one core mechanic. <laughs> Sorry, focus on one core mechanic. If you're excited about those procedurally generated puzzles, build them first. Don't try to, you know, don't spend your time on the main menu. Two, start with the simplest rendering method. Text first or in the browser, go from DOM to Canvas to WebGL. Don't buy too much at once. Three, render early. Don't try to write an engine. Put something on the screen, make change, repeat. It will keep things motivating. Four, cut corners. 
If you don't know how something should work, just fake it. This is not your job. <laughs> you know, your job here is rule five, have a lot of fun. So have a lot of fun, build something, and let me know what you build. Thank you.